The CDC is looking into several cases of people who became HIV positive after receiving a vampire facial. So they basically went to a beauty salon to look better and feel better and walked out with a deadly viral illness. How could this even occur? Hi, I'm Dr. Messina and I'm going to tell you how. It could only occur one way. And unfortunately, those people received a blood product that contained the blood of another patient that happened to be HIV positive. When you do vampire facials, it should be a very safe and very sterile procedure. You're using your own blood products. There should be zero chance of you developing hepatitis or HIV or any other bloodborne viral illness. The only way that could happen, like I said, is contamination. Let's look at the process. I'm going to show you the easy PRF kits because that's what I use at the office and I do tend to like them because they're very well contained and easy to use. Step one is you withdraw blood from the patient. Now in this video that I found on the internet, hopefully they sterilized the skin with some alcohol at the very least. He then inserts his needle and we have the first point of entry here. He taps the needle with his finger. That's a great way to contaminate the system. You then withdraw the blood and you put it into these sterile single-use test tubes. That's important. They're sterile from the company. They're used once and then they're discarded. You spin it down in the centrifuge. That separates the different layers of the blood. And you suck out what you need. It's either going to be platelet-rich plasma or platelet-rich fibrin. And that's going to depend on the rate at which it's spun. You then take this product and put it into a series of smaller syringes. And after you've sterilized the face, you inject this subcutaneously throughout the tissue. And then you discard those needles as well. What happened in these medical spas is when they're not run by physicians or medical personnel, there's no true understanding of sterile technique and sterility for that matter at all. The only way they could have cross-contaminated is if they reused the syringe or the needle or the test tubes. What probably happened is they did it, they may have washed it off, let it dry and then reused it. It's done for cost savings and it's really irrational because it doesn't cost that much to buy from the company a set of tubes and a set of syringes. So these products that were designed to be used only one time and then discarded weren't. The one thing that does surprise me though is clearly they were reusing equipment. I'm surprised there was not more bacterial, viral and fungal infections found in these patients because simply washing something off and then putting a blood product in it is a great way to create secondary infections. When we look at a vampire facial after it's done, a lot of the times they show you a very bloodied face. That's because they added a microneedling to the process to create a series of channels as well as to stimulate the collagen to give the treatment a little bit of a boost. If you just do straight PRF or PRP, you're not gonna have that bloodied face. Sometimes people will put the blood product on the skin and then massage it in through those little holes. I don't like doing that. I find it too much of a risk of creating secondary infections by something being contaminated, being at the glove or being at the product sitting on the skin. Plus, you're exposing your whole office to a blood product which is going to be splattering. So I prefer to inject it with a syringe. I hope you learned something with this video. And I hope you're not afraid to try the vampire peel. When it's done correctly at a proper establishment, it's very safe and fairly effective. Take care.